What's up, YouTube? Today, we're spending more time with Dapu Isaac here, one of our gold students who just finished up his triplex conversion. And Dapu, last time we were here a couple months ago, man, this whole thing was just framed. Uh, I don't even know if there was insulation in here, but now it's basically 90, 95% finished. Make sure that you guys stay tuned right to the very end. We're actually gonna show you the one bedroom unit, which I think is gonna be a real awesome money maker upstairs. And we're gonna cover all the numbers as well as the big magic question, which is Dapu, was it worth it? And would you do it again? I really liked your kitchen though. Let's go check out the kitchen in here. Sure. It's uh, looks like it's ready to go for Airbnb. Uh, last time we were here, I think you had all kinds of building materials on the washer dryers, but yeah, beautiful kitchen here newer appliances, all the amenities that people are gonna want for a short-term rental. And you're thinking more medium-term rental for this unit, right? It depends on how the market is going. So probably mid-term rentals to the winter months and summer months, I'll take the Airbnbs. Yeah, so a bit of a hybrid approach. I like that because that helps to diversify and kind of spread out the risk. You're not all in on one strategy, right? That's all right. Yeah, you have to be flexible for everything. Well, let's go upstairs, check out the other unit, and uh, sure. which used to be a garage, I believe, right? Yes, it's uh, it was a one and a half garage. Right on. And uh, right now it's completely finished, uh, one bedroom unit. So walking out of the basement unit here and super convenient that the next unit is right here too. You know, not a bachelor, but it's a decent sized one bedroom. I like some of the things that you guys have done in here. Um, and I believe you've picked up some of the furniture kind of on the chic, right? There was someone else that was getting out of some of their furnished rentals and you were able to pick up some of them. Yes. From in the so zone. one of the person was getting out of their Airbnb business and I got those uh, furnitures uh, for cheaper rate. Uh, those are good furnitures. And uh, then some of them for this unit, I mainly use some premium uh, materials because I want uh, to act this one as a premium yeah. rental. This will be more of your premium unit. Now, this didn't come without delays. Like I remember we were talking about when you thought this would actually be done. You were thinking just after the holidays and it was actually done by the first week of February, but now we're the last week of March and it's just ready to launch. So what happened there to Pooh and how could you maybe have avoided it in the future? So um, what happened was actually the electricians were delayed. Uh, their appointment was not uh, given until the end of March. Uh, that was a delay. Actually, it was the main construction was completely done on March 6th, February 16th. February 16th. And um, here we are, like uh, next week, the final inspection is going and it'll be live soon. Well, delays are a real thing in construction and in real estate here, gang. So if you're not prepared to put up with some delays, frankly, I think if you don't get any delays and you've really won the lottery or you're the contractor and you can just make sure you, you can control everything, right? So. A nice unit here. Let's check out the kitchen. And obviously all these units need to have built-in laundry. So you got your laundry right here. Um, tell us a little bit about the kitchen because you would have to make some decisions here on the size of the fridge, size of the stove, um, lots of counter space here and you weren't with an upgraded uh, countertop here, so. So initially uh, we were constrained with the space. So that's why we went with, uh, we have to act, uh, accommodate all the appliances and um, plus we want to uh, consider the space. So we went with 24 inch appliances for like stove, dishwasher and fridge, and 27 inch washer and dryer. We went with the stones for the countertops. And uh, yeah, for sure. Like yeah, all the steel and black like, candles, white counters, love it, man. This is kind of like the, the, the formula that, that just works for people, right? This is that new modern design that everybody's looking for. So, right, so what are some tips here? Like you guys were, like thrifting, you guys were buying stuff over auction. You guys were also buying things from other Airbnb hosts that were kind of wrapping up shop, right? So, but what are some other tips and tricks that you would give to other people that are like wanting to furnish a unit? So the majority of our uh, furnishing was coming to auction. And also we were uh, looking at marketplace and also like uh, somebody selling off their uh, Airbnb units. So we are uh, picking and matching from different um, aspects. Yeah, so you furnished two Airbnb units here for like $8,500. Yeah. Uh, usually that's like the cost of me doing one unit. So I need to obviously hire you and your wife to help me out with my next ones here. But those are awesome tips there, guys. All right, Dapu. Well, thanks so much for the tour of this unit here. But so many people have been waiting to hear about the numbers. So I know you bought it for $550. Your renovation was originally going to be 150 It went up to 170 Hey, we had some overages there. But um, actually, your coach, Corey Frock, sitting over here on the couch, has a full breakdown of these numbers. So... Let's let him spew out some uh, number genius here for the next 30 to 60 seconds. So Corey, you know, what are some of the rates of returns here and help the 
viewers understand like why this is a great deal when you're doing a conversion and then you can refinance it after. So what are the likely scenarios here? Yeah, absolutely. So the purchase price was 550 and you put $170,000 into it. So cash needed in total was $290,000 in order to do this. Um, if we're saying the appraised value, we don't know quite what it's going to be yet. Very conservatively, we think the minimum you're going to get is 800,000, which means on the refi, then you'll have to leave in about $90,000, $95,000. Um, the upside of that appraisal is probably closer to 850, which means you have to leave in between 50 and $55,000. So from a rate of return perspective, using an average appreciation of 3% over the long term, at, you know, even if you left in $100,000, you're getting over a 50% rate of return. And as soon as you bring that down, like, so if you get an 850 out of the refi and your money left in the deal is, you know, $55,000, your rate of return is up to 90%. That's after one year. Um, so Corey, you've got a lot of short-term rentals here as well, and you've got a membership to AirDNA. So for people that aren't aware, AirDNA is basically um, pulls all the data from Airbnb for years and years and years. So you can really get a good, some really good financial optics when it comes to what would your rental perform like on that kind of a market. So uh, downstairs, it's below grade, but it is a two bedroom unit. And um, AirDNA is saying $182 a night. Um, the goal would be to get at least 70% occupancy or more. And then up here, I mean, it's a one bedroom unit, $125 a night. But again, I just think this one is going to perform even better. I, I don't think you're going to have a hard time with your occupancy here, Depu, just because it's, it's, you know, right across the street from the mall, it checks the box for one person, two people. You know, I just think it's a really cool unit. This one's going to really pop in the pictures. And uh, I think when you actually run your math between the two, you'd be surprised at how it's going to go, right? So downstairs, you might do a hybrid option, but up here, you're probably just going to keep renting it as a, uh, as a short term rental. Yes. So, um, yes, my uh, main goal for this uh, garage unit is as an Airbnb, like a premium Airbnb. And the uh, basement is um, like a mix-up portfolio, like, I mean, like short-term rental and a medium-term rental. Uh, during the winter months, like not very many people like um, uh, basement rentals. So um, me, my, um, maybe we'll go for a uh, medium-term rental during that time. That's right, gang. So you typically, as an investor, when you're doing the burr, you get the biggest pop and the biggest return on your investment in that year one. And then after that, you're still making like usually double digit returns. So this is gonna be a solid buy, um, you know, all in for 720. The refi is gonna come in higher. The numbers just make sense on these deals in this neighborhood. Like I said, not all strategies work in every single market in every single neighborhood. So that's why it makes sense to make sure you have some guidance in your corner when you're doing these kinds of projects. All right, gang, you've been very patient watching right to the end, end of this video. Drop a comment with what you think this uh, this unit looks like here. What advice do you have for Depu? He hasn't put his art and all the knickknacks up yet, but I think he's off to a very solid start with his first rental. But Depu, was it worth it? And would you do it again? This has been a lot of work for you. You've had delays, it's gone over budget, and it's not even rented yet. You haven't got in $1 yet from any of your rentals, but would you do it again? Was it worth it? For sure, I will definitely do it again. And it's really well worth it and uh, it's going to be making a lot of cash for you and uh and it's good it's it's going to be a good asset for you for the future right on well for you not for me but uh, this is definitely a good flagship property you can keep a close eye on it because you are living on site so again there gang congrats and ha uh, hats off to depu here he was able to do a triplex conversion he was able to find a cash flowing property here you can do it too and if you ever want any help with this please feel free to reach out to me or anybody on our team we help people with this every single day of the week, every single month of the year. And uh, if you are ever struggling with what, what strategy works in my area, because not every strategy works in every single market, just reach out to us. We can grab our strategy call. We can help you move forward faster like the Pooh here. But again, my friends, keep investing in real estate. I love, I love investing in hard assets. So does the Pooh. So does Corey. Until the next video, gang, be great and keep looking at deals.